When we have gravity, an object is influenced by the gravitational acceleration. And the gravitational acceleration is a constant. And we write often for that gravitational acceleration the letter g. Whether I drop an object or throw it vertically up or I throw it vertically down, it's all one-dimensional. It becomes two-dimensional when I throw it at an angle. I keep it one-dimensional. The acceleration is always the same. And that g, gravitational acceleration, in Boston is 9.80 meters per second square, and it varies a little bit for different places on Earth. This gravitational acceleration is independent of the mass of the object that I drop, of the speed of the object, of the chemical composition of the object, of the size of the object, and of the shape of the object, assuming that we have no air drag, assuming that these experiments are done in, in vacuum. Is it obvious that the gravitational acceleration is independent of all these quantities? By no means. Is it true? We think so. But I want you to appreciate that it is not obvious and it cannot be proven from first principle. Remember last time we dropped an apple from three meters and we dropped another one from one and a half meters. And in your second assignment, which you haven't seen yet, I'm asking you to calculate the gravitational acceleration for me using these both experiments. And of course, I want you to also tell me what the uncertainty is in your final answer. And I'd like to help you a little bit to set it up and also to get these equations in terms of gravity. Whenever we deal with gravity, we get the g in there. So suppose here is the object at time t equals zero. It was the apple, and I call that position x zero, I call that zero. I'm free to choose my zero position, and I drop it at zero speed. I just let it go, because that's the way we did it in class. The object goes down, and it hits the floor. Well, the general equations now, which deal in gravity, if I call this the increasing value of x, you can choose it differently. This is my choice today, is the following. x equals x zero plus v zero t plus one half g t squared. And g now is nine point eight zero meters per second squared. The velocity at any moment in time equals v zero plus g t and the acceleration is constant, is simply g. Now in my case I have chosen t equals zero, x zero is zero and I've chosen this zero, so these go. And so you see that when the object is here, which is three meters below this point, and you know the time how long it took to get there, that you can now calculate g. Because x would be then three meters, that's when it's here. We made a measurement in class how long it took, so you know the time, and so you can come up with a value for g. And you can do that for both measurements, and of course I want you to tell me also what the uncertainty is in those measurements. Remember that we derived last time that c, that the time that it takes for the apple to fall was c times the square root of h over g, and we never knew what that c was. I did a demonstration to show you that the time is proportional to the square root of h. We never knew what that c was. Now you know, because now you have the equations here, and you'll see that that c simply was the square root of two. But I could not derive that from my dimensional analysis. Now, I want you to relax and at the same time get a little bit alert for a change. Look at this situation, v equals gt. That means when I drop an apple, and I'm going to drop another one today, that the velocity increases with time. So if I 
stroke this apple while it was falling, I would see the separation when it strobes to increase with time because the velocity goes up with time. I have here an apple, or I'm going to put an apple up, about three meters from the floor. Three meters. So the height is three meters, approximately. We know from last time, remember we did it, it was about 780 milliseconds to hit the floor. I will just round it off and I think about it about eight-tenths of a second, just to get an idea. If I flash, if I strobe it twice per second, we call that two hertz, so my strobe is two times per second, then I should hit that ball when it's falling twice with my strobe light. I don't know where it is, though, because when we strobe it and when I let the apple go, the two are not synchronized, so maybe the first time that the light blinks, it may be here, and the second time it may be here. But it's also possible that the first time it's here and the second time is there. And so the first thing I want to do is to test your alertness. We will blink. You will tell me where you see them, but we will take a picture. We will take a picture which will show us exactly where those two balls were. So that's the first alertness test. So get ready for this, and then we will do a second one, which is even more intriguing. So now I have to first lower this velvet so that we get a nice dark background. There we go. Wow, with my fingerprints on it, it's not so black anymore. There it is. That's the background. Oh, what am I doing? I need the ladder again. I have to bring the apple up. Friday is always a bad day for me. Okay. So now I'm going to bring the apple up. There is a some metal here, it's an electromagnet, and so I throw a switch here so that the electromagnet is activated. Very similar to what we did last time. We have to put the apple up, and the apple is hanging there. There we go. So now I have to start the uh, the strobe. That's about two hertz. That's about two flashes per second. And I'm going to make it pitch black. Pitch black. All the lights go off. I will count down three, two, one, zero. And Bob there, who is behind the camera, will open the shutter when I say one. And when I say zero, the ball will fall. So you may always see the ball in its highest position. That may not count there, of course, because it makes two flashes in the time that the shutter is open and that I drop it. Okay, if you're ready, I'm ready. Make it as dark as we can. Bob, are you ready? Class ready? Yeah. Everyone ready? You don't look ready. Okay. Three, two, one. That was zero. So let's look at this again in slow motion. So now we are developing that picture, and I would like you to tell me where you saw the balls. Where were they, roughly? Where was the first one? How much, how much below the highest point? Only this much? 
The first one. And then the second one was pretty low then. OK. Sounds interesting. We'll take a look. While the picture is developing, I'm now going to test your real alertness. I'm going to strobe it with an unknown frequency, unknown to you. I will tell you a secret, it's a higher frequency. You're going to see more balls on the way down. I'm not going to ask you where they are exactly. All I want you to tell me afterwards, how many you saw. That's all. So count them as it falls. You know you have only 0.8 seconds to count. Bob, how did the picture come out? Wow, you're good. Whoa. You're good. It was very high, actually, the first, uh, the first flash. Very high. You see, it's, you did very well. We are going to start now with the second part. Is the audio restored? Should be. So I uh, activated the magnet again. There it is. Oh, my goodness. Working? Okay, thank you, Bob. Okay, Bob, if you're ready, ready. I'm ready. I'm going to make it as dark as we can. So all I want you to tell me how many Balls, will you see? All right, ready? Bob, you okay? Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> well? Who saw three? Four. Four, I want to know four. Five. Five. Here's a five. There's a five. Another five. Who throws six? Wow. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. <laughs> Who's just so <saw> blur? <laughs> Those are the real winners, I think. Well, I'll tell you, it was ten hertz, since it is 0.8 seconds, depending upon where you hit it, how lucky you are, I will show you. You will either see seven or maybe eight balls, but it was a good test. And for those of you who thought that it was only, that only saw five, there you see them. Let's count them. Let's count them together. One, this is one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is a bounce. So for those of you who saw five, I would say take some rest this weekend, you'll need it, and I'll need it too. See you Monday. <laughs>